That's the name that I've given her. Whether that's her name or not, that's her name. So welcome everybody to Your Words Have Power, cycle number nine. We have today four wonderful speakers. We have Kate Kendall from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. We have Tracy Cave joining us from here in Perth, Western Australia. Liz Mutasa joining us also here from Perth, Western Australia. And Fraser Hay from north of Aberdeen in the northeast of Scotland. So those are your speakers for today. Now, let's see who else we've got here. We've got the team to introduce to you. Can we flip on to the next one, please, Hannah? Thank you. OK, I'll introduce me first. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Wendy Corner and I work with speakers who want to share an important message. All four of you who are here today are really passionate about your message and that's why you've come. So speakers who are passionate about getting their message out to the world. I work with speakers who want to look red hot on the red spot. So for TEDx presentations. And in that vein, I work with the TEDx University of Western Australia team once people get accepted into UWA for the TEDx, that's where we work with them for part of the voluntary work. But I also work with speakers to get them ready for that position. 30 years as a speech pathologist prior to that in England, Scotland and Australia. From Scotland, now here in this Perth, as opposed to near the other Perth. And I'm also a bit of a communication geek. I've been dealing in communication since, oh, well, I've been qualified since 1988 and was playing around with language a lot longer than that. And also for those of you who know me and know me well, I'm also a kombucha enthusiast. So that's the top, that's one end of the team. Now let me tell you about the other <sighs> members of the team. Let me introduce you to them. We have the wonderful Hannah in the Philippines. Give us a wave, Hannah. She's in charge of the flight deck. We have the lovely Jenny, who is in Singapore. We have Kayla, who is in South Africa. And we're missing Susie, who's also in Singapore, but she's not able to join us today. So welcome on behalf of the team at Your Words Have Power. Hello, Laurie from Cork. Lovely to see you. Okay, so next slide, please, huh? What we are up to doing, we're recording, as you know, we're active participation, please. You have the chat box, you know where that is, crack on, share where you're from and make comments and ask questions in the chat as we go along. For those of you who haven't already found it, at the bottom of your screen, you will have lots of different things that you can access, including reactions. So you can go for things like a heart or you can go for things like celebrate, when somebody's made a point that you agree with and you like. So use those reactions. There will be a panel session towards the end and we will get questions through the, so as your questions come up, pop them in the chat and we'll, we'll, tail them at the, we'll table them at the end. There will be a survey. We'll pop up the, Hannah will pop up the, the URL for that two minutes before we finish. Please do make a note of this so that you've got it for the next 24 hours. It's only open for 24 hours because you as speaker champions have a job to do. That's why you're speaker champions, you're not audience. You're not here just to sit back and listen. You're here to be open, to be focused and to be present. What is the information coming to you so that you can then give feedback to the speakers on what works, what could do with some work and a suggestion for how to make their presentation even better. So that's what's up. That's what we ask you to do as speaker champions. You will also be voting on who your favorite speaker is and the best speaker feature, their little slice of today's action will go up on our socials. So spread the love. So we have mute on please. If you are not actually speaking, please make sure that you are muted. So we don't have any background noise and your camera is on please because then you can engage with your speakers and the speakers can engage with you. And here we go. We're about to have our photos taken. 
So are you ready, Hannah? Take it away, please. Give us the instructions. Thank you, Wendy. Okay, everyone, uh, in a count of three, everyone will say, hey, all right. So you one... want to stop the screen share? Sorry. Okay. So everyone, in a count of three, one, two, three, say, hey. 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 Thank you. Over to you, Wendy. Love it. Thank you. Okay. So can we get back to the screen share, please? Love it. Just before we get going on Thursday, we have our storytelling on steroids workshop. Three workshops for the price of one. One of the things that has come up time and again is how structure is necessary in presentations, whether it's telling a particular story or whether it's the flow of the whole presentation. Having that flow so that you as a speaker know where you're going, your audience feels comfortable because they can see you know where you're going and they don't get lost either. This is coming up on Thursday and we have the opportunity, as I said, there's three workshops for the price of one. We have the live one, you have access to a recording one, and there's another one later on. We've also got a free pass to Your Words Have Power in the, as part of the deal. So more details below there, please check them out and we will see you on Thursday this week. Thank you, Hannah. This is our agenda. We're going to crack on quickly, 10 minutes each for the speakers. If after 10 minutes you're still talking, I will mute you. Just to let you know that I've, there will be a timer on the countdown on my screen, so keep an eye on that. Hannah will also give us a flash of her paddles. Hannah, could you pop those up so we can see them, please? This one. Show them in your screen. Thank you. Love it. Okay. So we'll make a start then. As I said, we've got the, the Q&A panel at 10.2, and then we will finish off after that. So thank you. Kate is our first speaker. Kate is from the Gold Coast, not Brisbane. And she's been working in the corporate situation for a long time, has come out of corporate, and is now working with entrepreneurs to work about de-stressing, doing an awful lot of work with head and heart. And that's what she's coming to talk to us today about moving from your head to your heart. Kate, over to you. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Wendy, for the introduction and the opportunity to, to be here today. So I don't know, have you ever felt that you've been, you haven't belonged and you've felt out of place and feeling like you've got these emotions that are just racing around and you're just not really familiar and, and sure what's actually going on. You've got having all these mood swings. My apologies. And you just tend to push it away and push it, push it down. And being told that you're, you know, don't be an angry person, don't be a sook, or you're always so emotional. Why are you so emotional all the time? And so what you do is go and eat food, drink alcohol, binge watch Netflix and just hide your feelings and emotions. That's actually what I had actually been doing for, for such, a long, such a long time. I'd hide behind the smile, I had a mask on and I didn't actually realise the emotions that I was experiencing and how important they were in my life. And I was in a highly stressful job, uh, I was in a corporate world and I just didn't know how to understand what my emotions were actually telling me. And I grew up, like, I just want to tell you, share a story with you um, about my dad. And I don't know if this is something that you've, you know, been familiar with, but I had this association with anger. I was uncomfortable with anger. I would always say that I was frustrated more than I'd say I'm angry because I just, I didn't want to be that type of person that was, uh, you know, an ang known as an angry, angry kind of person. Because when I was a little kid, dad's way of communicating and, and expressing his emotions was through anger. And so as a little girl, I, and then even as an adult, I found that I was feeling so 
um, you know, so trapped in, you know, when I'd hear someone yell or when, I, when I'd actually feel anger myself. So I didn't actually know how to express it until I actually learned how to understand my emotions. And when I was able to understand what these emotions were actually telling me and what I was experiencing through the breath and being able to move from my head to my heart allowed me to actually be able to sit with the emotions and what was actually what I was responding to or reacting to, I was able to manage that and not eat and drink my emotions away. And let me know in the chat, have you, are you finding that you've, you feel these emotions, you, you know, you've been told by a partner, you know, you're so emotional, you're such a sook, um, grow up, don't be, don't, don't be moody all the time. How often are we told to shut down the emotions, push them away? Men, men are told to don't, don't be a sook, don't cry, don't, you know, um, grow up, don't, you know, if they fall over and hurt themselves. So how often have you heard these? I'd love to know, what have you heard as a kid? What did you hear in, you know, when you were younger? Does any of those relate to you? Have you got something else? So we have... 27 emotional emotions, right, that we have, that, but our core emotions, we have five core emotions. And those core emotions are actually sadness, happiness, and, and, joy, and joy, fear, anger, and disgust. So the five, disgust are the five key core emotions that we generally experience. And if we don't actually know how to understand these emotions, we have fear getting in the way of actually being able to approach people, connect, have communication, then there's judgment, shame and guilt around how we're actually feeling and what we're actually experiencing. So it stops us from actually expanding and growing and feeling like we actually belong and connecting with people and connecting deeper with ourselves so we can actually connect deeper with other people or actually get clarity on where you want to go in your life and your business and your direction. And our thoughts create our feelings and create our emotions. So what are, our, what are your beliefs? What are your limiting beliefs from maybe as a child or what stories have you been telling yourself? That actually creates your feelings, which are the sensations in your body. And that then creates the emotions, which is our reactions uh, and responses to situations. And these emotions come up to actually have us to look at those things that are potentially, you know, need healing, Need, need, need some love, need some care. And it's about, you know, what I love learning and love teaching people is how to understand those emotions and take away the, the, the guilt and the shame and the judgment on actually what you're experiencing. And when you feel you can actually heal and that's how you can move from your head to your heart and we create new beliefs, we create new stories to, help, to have us feel in a different different way respond in a different way and experience different emotions but we're going to experience all of our emotions and that's actually beautiful and a couple of my clients that I work with uh, you know um, have just been able to through the breath and through the, the methods and, and you know through actually understanding and connecting with the body and moving from the head to the heart because society we're living up here we're so worried. We're so uh, so worried about what people are thinking with social media. What you know? What is someone else doing? What are they doing? What are their business doing? How are they doing? But what about what if you actually welcome time to your heart and your core being by understanding your emotions and your stories and your beliefs and uh, create the new identity and beliefs and stories, you're able to move down deeper into your heart and welcome home. We're always striving to be better. We're always striving to be a better version of ourselves. And I used to say that all the time until more so recently, I was like, how about if we actually came home to who you actually really are and welcome home to who you really truly are and still grow and can, you know, grow and be more conscious and be open hearted by connecting from the head to the heart, you belong, you start to belong more home and welcome home to who you are. And then that's when you actually are showing up as your true self, opposed to trying to be someone else. And that landed really a lot for me when I started to say to myself and learn this, that if you welcome home to your heart, and not try to be better 
or a better version all the time, how freeing that is that it actually is to let go of that baggage that weighs people down. A lot of women come to me for weight loss and it's not about the weight. It's actually not about the weight. It's actually about how they see themselves in the mirror, how they connect with themselves and be able to free themselves from that heavy baggage and shame and guilt, the trauma, the grief that they've been holding on to and be able to gain the mojo back and have that skip in their step because they're actually allowing themselves to be and feel. I've had so many of my clients come to me and we, we do this work and this connection to self and th they think they're coming to get the next diet and the next program that's going to tell them how to get from A to Z. But I give them a vehicle and a, a space where they can actually feel and connect and drop into who they are. And it just lights me up when they can actually have that space to cry if they want to cry without any judgment, to be angry if they want to be angry, if they want to yell and swear, then they can do that and not have anyone judge them and tell them to shut up, be quiet and minimise their shine. Who's had their, their, their shine dimmed, their light dimmed? Yep, I have too. So it's time for, for us to actually shine our light brightly, turn that light up and be able to understand the discomfort that you might be experiencing and you may experience through feeling your emotions because we're scared. We're scared of what might come up. But what if actually leaning into that discomfort and getting comfortable being uncomfortable allowed you to free yourself to actually welcome yourself home and love who you see in the mirror. So I, I coach women one-on-one -on -one through breath work called Clearing Breathwork, which is a beautiful modality. I have group coaching. And if you'd like to come across to my, my group, my Women's Holistic Health Hub, if you'd like me to come and speak uh, in your community, if you feel that I, I would, you know, what I do would benefit uh, benefit your people, helping to minimise stress, minimise anxiety and actually depression. The breath work just really helps us to connect and, you know, I, I'd love, love, you know, love you to reach out and uh, thank you so much for your time tonight, tonight this afternoon and uh, it's really great to connect with you guys. Thank you so much. Well done. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Some powerful stuff going on in there, wasn't there? Let me just grab that app thing for the time up. Yes, shush. Yes, we got there. Thank you. Right. Tracy. Tracy is our second wonderful speaker. Now, Tracy heads up the sister project here in Perth, one of our suburbs, and works with an amazing bunch of ladies. I've met a couple of them called the Sister Project. And the Sister Project is working with migrant ladies who have moved here and are working around, where do I belong? We've just heard Kate talking about belonging to ourselves. Let's see Tracy's take on where do I belong? Over to you, Tracy. Gotcha. Thank you, hi everyone. Where do I belong? The very wise Maya Angelou said, you are only free when you realize you belong no place, you belong every place, no place at all. The price is high, the reward is great. Growing up, we moved around a fair bit from city to country, to surfy town and farming village. I was often the new girl, the outsider. I became self-reliant and capable of looking for patterns and characteristics in new people and finding potential new connections and friends. This lifestyle con continued into adulthood, traveling to many countries and living in a few. It became very possible to become friends with people who I often did not understand what they were saying. 
it was very possible to feel joy and contentment with a group of friends at dinner and not get all the jokes or understand all the slang. I was eating from the highlands of Papua New Guinea to the back streets of Mexico City, the chilled life of Tonga, Phuket, the Masai Mara, to the fast paced energy of Tokyo, Accra, Nairobi, LA, or New York. I became used to being the foreigner, the outsider. The last country I lived in, where the strong, rich culture, language and religion was very different to my own, I realised I was viewed as having more in common with any and all of the foreigners, regardless of background, than I did with any of the locals. The general understanding was foreigners brought some sort of wickedness with them and were not to be trusted. Anything bad that happened in the neighbourhood and I, along with all the other foreigners, regardless of our background, were suspects. Daily, people, not all people, strangers, people who didn't know me, treated me with suspicion. They wouldn't sit next to me on the bus or a packed train. They crossed the road when I approached. Children who are the honest, unfiltered mouthpieces would point and call out to me with the offensive slang words for foreigner, foreigner. The media would carry headlines such as foreigners taking our jobs or increase in crime linked to increase in foreigners. The cartoons and caricatures would depict all foreigners in a particularly sinister fashion. Have you seen similar headlines or storylines in our own media, perhaps just before an election or when a divergence is needed to attract or distract detract the main population to or from a particular cause. We were definitely the other. Being the other and feeling like one is on their own can create extended periods of isolation and deep loneliness, yet also periods of deep reflection and contemplation. And of course, the much needed ability to be resilient. Humans are naturally wired for connection Indeed, even when we are born, we are tethered to another human being. And yet, even in this unnecessarily hostile environment where I was, there were many times where I felt like I belonged. This was my local supermarket. These are my friends coming to visit. These were my workplace. There were always connections. People and places where I felt safe and a sense of enjoyment. How do you find that sense of enjoyment or that sense of belonging in a place where you do not belong? As Brene Brown noted, at the end of the day, it comes down to a conviction of self-worth. She said, true belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your feelings and find a sacredness, <clears throat> excuse me, in both being a part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. According to Brene, the trick to belonging is to have this deep rooted belief in yourself and be willing to share your most authentic self with those around you. If they reciprocate, accept your authentic self and offer you theirs, then you've made a valuable connection and can foster this sense of belonging. If your authentic self is not accepted and the willingness to connect is not reciprocated, then it's also okay because you belong to yourself. You know you have this deep connection to yourself and it's possible to stand alone in the wilderness as there will be connect opportunities for connection elsewhere. This connection with others is not based on the ability to speak the same language or have the same ideals. Very simply, it's the willingness to offer and receive connection. Returning to Australia after a couple of years, my sense of identity was required to shift again. I was now on the cultural inside and those I had aligned myself with, my fellow foreigners over the past few years, were still the ones being treated with suspicion. In the creative world of us and them, I had become an us team player, but my peers were still falling in the social, various social, while I'd been overseas and away from the bombardment of the media, my peer group, workplace, family, I was able to greatly lower the noise of everyone else's expectations and just get to know me, make my own decisions about things for my own expectations. As Brene said, I was standing 
on my own in the wilderness. As part of the culture shock on return, it was overwhelming to me that many other people would try, in many other ways that people would try and draw distinctions between each other, provide labels, pigeonhole you into one or another category that you could still at any moment become a them rather than us. Labels to do with ethnicity, religion, town or city or suburb where you lived, where the preferred sport or creative pursuits, your accent and use of Australian slang, white collar, blue collar worker, political party, the school you went to, the type of clothing you wore, your gender, your sexuality, the way you raise your kids, heck, even the way you fold your towels. In the bid to connect with each other and find others like us, we've created these labels to sort these potential candidates for connection. Like fences, we pen ourselves in more and more using these created labels of what we do, like or approve, and then there's all the others. Social media has added to this sorting and categorizing at high speed. Facebook and Insta feeds will show us only things that we've made quite clear that we're interested in. At election time, everyone thinks their team is winning right up until when the results are called and even sometimes afterwards. Our daily lives are lacking diversity. There is not the cross-pollination of different ideas that create a richness and a depth of contrasting opinions enjoyed in conversations and relationships. You're either in my little fun stuff area and one of us, or you're one of them. In our efforts to find comfort and connection, we've created prisons for ourselves. A lack of compromise and effort at understanding each other, we look for differences rather than look for similarities. It doesn't have to be this way. With this in mind, in an effort to break down these socially constructed fences, I'm proud to say I founded an organization in the Northeast of Perth called Sister Project. You can find us easily on our website, Facebook and Insta. Regardless to where you are in the world, I hope you will take the time to be a valued part of our thriving and supportive community. Sister Project was set up to support and empower migrant and refugee women in what can often be Australia's version of a hostile environment. There are many often unseen barriers to migrant and refugee women being able to get work, for example, such as language barriers, additional family responsibilities, potentially increased transport issues, sometimes issues to do with domestic violence, lack of support or a lack of access to community services. This is before you even get to the perpetual requirement of Australian workplaces requiring Australian qualifications and Australian work experience. The premise of our organization is to highlight that we have more in common than we have differences. There are women in this group from every continent in the world. As you can expect, there are many religions, languages, cultures, political beliefs, ways to raise children and even ways to fold tales. And there are so many similarities and opportunities for connection. Some of us like to cook, yet we all like to eat. Some of us like to be fit and enjoy a dance class. Some of us enjoy doing craft, yet we all enjoy doing an activity that makes us feel good. Some of us speak Arabic, Dinka, Farsi, yet we all like being able to communicate and feel like we're someone's listening to us. We all have so much in common with each other. If you look for reasons why you don't belong, you will always find them. If you look for reasons why you do belong, you will find those also. My call to action for you today is to look around, find someone who looks different to you. If you're wanting to connect to others and see there is an opportunity to create this sense of belonging, it always starts the same thing. Yours. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much, Tracy. Right on the nose, too. <laughs> that was brilliant. Thank you. It is a very powerful group. I've, I've only seen the outside edge, but believe me, I've seen the photos of all the wonderful food that's cooked there. I'm going to pay a visit. Okay, our third speaker today is the lovely Liz Matassa, also from here in Perth. An occupational therapist by training, she is very well aware of how things are, obstacles are put in the way of people who require extra support, extra access those of us who are classed as disabled. 
So she's going to talk to us at the moment today on We Are All Temporarily Abled. Liz, take it away. Thanks, Wendy. Good afternoon, everyone. It seems like we have a very common theme amongst us, which is belonging. Uh, and I'm going to touch on that in a minute. But my presentation today is going to touch mainly around that we are all temporarily abled. How many of, of us here, if you're comfortable, can identify themselves as having a disability? Just raise your hand if you're comfortable. How many of us have had an experience where a loved one has lived with a disability? Okay. How many of us here feel that our abilities are permanent, that we're always going to be able to do whatever we want? Nobody. Oh, all right, interesting. So, why I touch on the fact that our abilities are temporary is because it's nature. When you're born, your body goes through different changes. So throughout the different life stages. What you're able to do when you're a baby, when you're a toddler, when you're a young adult, when you're an older adult is completely different. So our human ability goes through processes throughout lifetime. The reason why I come to you this afternoon is to bring in awareness in regards to how our abilities are being disadvantaged in our environment. It's a ticking time bomb that with COVID having recently happened, I mean, we're still right in, in the midst of the pandemic. There are people who are suffering from long COVID. That's another area that we need to think clearly about in terms of our ability. We have been affected throughout history by different pandemics, by different illnesses uh, that have led to our abilities reducing. So I want you to come with me, to come along this journey to actually figure out how we can work together to improve our environment so that tomorrow we'll still be able to uh, to have the ability to function as we want to. So you may wonder, so with temporary ability, what, what is that about? Why, why, why does that matter, right? Some of you might think, oh, it's, it's not a person with disability problem. Why does that concern me? I'm fine, but it should concern you because as we know ability, is here today and is gone tomorrow. Whether that's through an accident, whether that's through an illness, whether that's through just aging, we have to be prepared because it is coming, the day that you will need your environment to work for you. Why environment? Environment is very important. Just as it's important for your mindset, for your health, the environment that you plant yourself in is very important in terms of where you go from now, in terms of how you align yourself with your life goals. Look around you just now, where you are. Do you feel that your environment is a reflection of you? Do you feel that your environment is a reflection of where you want to go with your life? It's important just to give an example. You know, when people go to bed, we're so not used to it. We get our phones, we go to bed with them, we sleep there. The first thing we do in the morning, we reach our phone, we go on social media, we scroll, right? And then sometimes we get upset for it because of whatever we have come across on the phone. But have we actually thought, maybe if I hadn't taken my phone to bed, I might have not reached for it in the morning. And I might not have a and psyche morning because of just having looked at my phone. It's things like that, that we take for granted, but they actually affect how our lives are. So that's just one example. Just gonna give you a backstory in terms of how for me, it came like my aha moment in how I realized environment really matters in terms of my own abilities. 
So born and raised in Zimbabwe. Um, my lovely mom is actually joining us this afternoon, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, she, at one point, so she was a big family lover. So at one point we were about 18 of us and in one household. So you can imagine the chaos, the love that was going on in that house. What was happening in that time was something that was, it seeded something within me that led to how I now view the world. Because in such environment, I was able to realize that we are all different. We are all going to have different abilities in terms of where we are in the life stage. So we had from newborn all the way to 90, my granddad. And then we had people that were unwell that needed a lot of input from the hospitals, from nurses. We had people that had impairments, chronic health conditions. But in that, I never looked at it as, oh, they're disabled. Ah, poor them. No, I saw it as part of life, part of being human. There was nothing about it that speaks, that spoke, oh, this person can't do that, therefore they shouldn't be allowed to do anything. It was such an inclusive environment that it promoted our human nature. It understood the fragility of our human nature. It didn't look at our ability as something to be pitied on. It looked at it as something very normal. There's nothing wrong with having temporary abilities because that's life. So even when I was listening to Tracy talking about us versus them, it's very true. A lot of the labels that we give, that word people with disability, it's a label that really, when you think about it, what does that mean? Because no one is born with a disability. We are born with different impairments, just like anyone. Some have severe, some have less severe, but no one is born perfect. We all are born into these bodies and we're trying our best to work in them. So environment, our abilities, the interaction between that matters. As we go through with accessibility, you may wonder, why are we talking about having access into this environment? So again, that interaction between human ability and environment, it's the quality that we need to look up at. It's the quality that we need to address because as much as there's that interaction, we haven't actually looked at how best can we have this environment be accessed by us? So that's where I come in as an accessibility and inclusion consultant. Three key points that I want you to take with you is firstly, human ability is fragile. Human ability changes. Secondly, accessibility of our environment is an all of us problem. We should care because we understand that we're human first. Human first means different abilities. So you and I, we got a job to do because as we address the need for accessibility in our environment, we are also fostering inclusion. And like I said, what Kate and Trace had mentioned, that belonging, you can't have that belonging if you're not included. The more we keep identifying and labeling each other is that group, that group, that group. Yes, we're trying to belong somewhere, but we're also secluding each other. We're one, we're a human race. I always laugh when I hear people talk about just a side track, people of color, just for an example. And I go, what does that mean? We all have color, right? And I always laugh when I hear people say, oh, LGBTQ community. And I'm going, what does that mean? I kissed a girl once in my childhood. Do I have to be in that community so that people can go, oh yeah, you belong there? No, I'm human. I'm going through experiences in life. 
and we should all be accepted to go through life because that's what we're here for. So as we close off, uh, I would like you guys to take this opportunity to go and subscribe to my new YouTube channel that's called Eliope, where we're going to be talking about everything accessibility, inclusion, and empowerment. Because I believe that in order for you to live your life to the fullest, you need to be empowered to design the life that you want to lead. So thank you so much, and we'll be seeing you soon. Fantastic, Liz. Thank you. Okay, Hannah, let's have that next slide. Bring us home. Freya is talking about how to get on point, on form, and on fire. This gentleman has been through more than his fair share of incidents in life but that's another story entirely. He's gonna share with us some of his learnings along the way in terms of getting your business on track. Fraser, over to you. Thank you. Many people can find it extremely difficult when faced with a challenge, an event, a decision, a situation, at some stage of their life, career, and business. Actually, for the last 20 years, I've helped individuals, entrepreneurs, managers, and small business owners to identify, pursue, and achieve their goals that they choose, whatever they want to be, do, and have. So instead of stagnating, instead of remaining where you are, I want you to choose to become whatever you choose to be, do and have, without the stress, without feeling overwhelmed and without feeling perplexed or in wanting to give up on your dreams, hopes, aspirations and goals. Today, I want to share a very powerful and practical four-step process. So grab a sheet of paper right now, because I'm going to take you through, because I want you to start becoming on point, on form and on fire. Buckle up. Grab that sheet of paper and draw a line right down the middle of the page and draw a line right across the middle of the page so you've got four squares. Are you ready? Let's begin. Let me take you back to April of 83. I woke up in a room and it was dark. I couldn't see anything and my head felt funny and a voice said, Fraser, you've been shot. Your left eye. We've had to extract it because it was bloody well mangled. Whoa. What was I to do? I was 15. I was all set for a career in the armed forces. Where was I now at? What was consuming my attention? Regret. Regrets of the past choices that I had made to take me to where I was. What was I going to be doing? My attention was focused on bloody hell, I can't speak. I couldn't speak. I couldn't get words out of my mouth. Quite often, we get worried about things in the future. I was worried. I'd only sat two O grades, ended up passing four, but I didn't do the other two. And what was I going to do in my life? What was next for me? We worry about the future. We get consumed with fear, worry, and doubt. Retirement, jobs, income life partner, everything can happen. But me, I was thinking of the now, right now. Here I am, hole in my face. What am I going to do? Can't you? Well, I need to pull my finger out and start doing things. Funnily enough, sometimes we can blame ourselves. We can blame others. We can fall out with others. It was their fault. It was the guy's fault that shot me. Technically, it was. <laughs> uh, but we can blame ourselves for being there, the choices we've made in the past. We can make excuses. So what happened next? Well, I went on, couldn't join the army, so I was in the army cadet force. I went on to become the best cadet in the platoon in the company. I was appointed the Lord Lieutenant's cadet for Banshire by the Queen. And I ended up escorting Prince Philip at the Trooping of the Colour. It's amazing what you can achieve if you know where you are. So step one 
is in the top right box, write the word, where am I now? Where am I now? Brackets, attention. What's taking up my attention? Moving forward. I was at a health and beauty show in Brighton a few years later, and I met a whole group of pregnant women. And uh, I was doing market research for cosmetic products, health products, aloe vera. And these women were complaining of swollen ankles, tired legs, sore backs. And it just struck me that the human condition and the human evolution wasn't going to stop in the next couple of weeks, months or years. And I thought, women are going to keep getting pregnant, but if they're going to have these ailments and conditions, there's a market. And I went around this health and beauty show and one of the ladies said, we're all here getting freebies. We want pamper bags and we're really, we're getting as much free stuff as we can. <laughs> Being a Scotsman, I could relate to that. And I said, all ah, right. And she said, I love the Repichage four layer facial mask. She says, it's beautiful. It's made from seaweed. I thought, seaweed? Hmm. So I ended up on a, on a stand and I read the postcode at the bottom, which was an EMB number. And in France, an EMB number is a postcode. So I memorized it and I thought I could find the laboratory that made these products. So what I did, I said, right, I'm going to start my own business. That's it. I've made my mind up. And that night as I was flying back up to Aberdeen, I'd made my mind up. I wasn't going to work for the cosmetics company. I was going to start my own business. Three kids. I was chuffed, working from home. Let's do it. And my wife, she met me at the airport and she embraced me. And she said, I've got some exciting news. I said, I've got some exciting news as well. She says, I'm pregnant and it's twins. What's your news? It can wait. It can wait. And quite often we get to stage two of the process and we need to think about what's our intention next. I wanted to be a good dad. It was now five, not three. And, but I had this idea for starting a business. So what was next? So what I did was I started the business with 10 pounds and I went on to win the Scottish and UK Shell Live Wire of the Year. Royal Bank of Scotland and the Prince of Scottish Youth Business Trust Business in the year. I was in the national press. There was a documentary done on the TV about me. And the UK government asked me to be a keynote speaker and address 500 economists, politicians, and entrepreneurs in Wiesla and Poland. And Wendy and I, we did London, New York, and Paris, and had speaking gigs abroad as well. And it's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it and think, I want to. So right now, write down three words, be, do, and have. What do you want to be, do, and have? Do you want to write a book? Do you want to do some speaking? Do you want to lose weight? What do you, do you want to travel? Do you want a bigger car? Do you want a newer car? Do you want a bigger house, second house, third house? Do you want a house abroad? What do you want to do? Do you want to travel one, two, five, 10, or 15 countries? I went through this process with my daughter and my boyfriend, and they did 22 countries in two years. It's amazing what you can achieve if you just do it. Unbelievable. Not only did I do that, but I had an absolute ball working from home with five kids. And I put four girls through university, doing what I love to do, having following this process. And then, bang. 2018, Wendy and I were in Greece, our 50th birthday. Sand, sea, Pringles and wine. What can you have from a holiday? It was brilliant. We're enjoying it. We flew back into Glasgow at quarter to midnight at night. Come out the main terminal, went into the Holiday Inn Express, ready for the four-hour drive up the next day. Closed my eyes and I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning and I couldn't see. Little did I know I was going to need injections to preserve my sight in my right eye. Gordon, Bennett, what's next? You just do not know what's around the corner. You just do not know what's round the corner. And me, I was thinking, why me? Why me? Here we are again. But I was at an opportunity junction. I had to take a good, long, hard look at myself. And that's where, yes, we need to know where we're at. What's to consume our attention? Yes, we need to think about what are we going to do next? What do I want to be, do, and have? Have the goals, fire up the energy and the desire within us and what my intention is. And then, why? What's the resistance that's holding me back? That bottom left corner, why is it not working? Why is this happening to me? Sometimes we need to hold up the ugly mirror and say, bloody hell, it's me, my lifestyle, what I'm doing. We need to listen to our bodies. I've done a 10, 12, 14, 18, 20, 28 hour day 
to reach a deadline, not to lose a client, to keep them happy on site, and everything that goes with that. I need new goals. I need to know exactly where I'm at. Have you ever tried to write a book when you can't see? You learn how to dictate. You learn how to use Windows Magnifier. You learn how to use all these tools. I wrote 10 books in 10 months and got all 10 to number one for their category on Amazon. I've now got over 20 books on Amazon, but that's a different story. Sometimes you need to take a good hard look at yourself to identify what's holding you back. You're dealing with the symptoms every day. I've heard words reaction. I've heard words responding. I've heard words of feelings and emotions. We react with our emotions, but we create with our feelings. Emotions are at the end of the creation process. We need to focus what it is that we want. And we need to, you don't want to be selfish. You're selfless. You've got so much knowledge, wisdom, talent, experience that you can productize and monetize and package that and share that with people who've got their own struggles, who are already stagnating, who are not on point, on form and on fire. So resistance, first square is where am I? And what's consuming my attention? The second one is intention. What do I want to be, do and have and be clear in your goals and your plan? And then number three, why? What's holding me back? What are the blocks and the weaknesses? What's consuming me? And then last but not least, I was approached by a publisher because that was one of my goals. I've done my own books on Amazon, self-published, but I wanted a publishing contract. And my wife and I were walking along a beach uh, in 2020 with a dog. Oh, Fraser, I've had to shut you up. I'm so sorry, we've finished our 10 minutes. Well, the thing is, you're just going to have to connect with Fraser, aren't you, and find out the end of the story. We have to be so tight with this because we've got a Q&A panel to come up with. I know I'm so harsh. I'm so sorry, guys. Were there any questions? Were there any questions we have for any of the panel, apart from what happened next, Fraser? That's, that's, that's a given, and I think we'll... <laughs> Please, everybody connect with Fraser because I would love, I'd love to hear the end of that story for definite. Okay. Who... What's step four, Fraser? Yeah, what's step four? Come on, that's a question for you. Unmute yourself and unmute yourself and give us a question for. Step four is the plan. How am I going to get there? Right. For a, a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal that's broken down becomes a plan and a plan that's actioned. And the last bit was I ended up on stage with the BBC in the Seychelles uh, with a the presenter from the Dragon's Den, BBC. And I co-wrote a book with a, the chief executive of a bank. And I've now got 10 books with a publisher that I wrote this year. So in COVID, from suffering from sepsis, I was able to write the books, become a keynote speaker, go abroad. Everything is just happening because I'm on point, on form and on fire, because the process works. I've just proven it to you. Just do it, just love it. Just be yourself and have fun. Shit happens, don't worry about it. Just crack on with it, I tell you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fraser. You absolutely embody the on fire, but for certain, I knew you'd bring it. I knew you'd bring it. Okay, have we got any other questions for our lovely panel? Kind of follow that really, but anybody else got a question? Talk about nine lives, absolutely, Layla. Fraser, you've had more than nine lives, I reckon. You're not a cat in another life, were you? Yes, Liz, your YouTube. You're going to um, drop up the, the links to your YouTube? Yes, I've just included it in the chat. Yes, uh, thank you. IOP. I believe everybody here is... Oh, actually, Lehman, looks like you're on a phone, so you probably can't catch the chat. For those of you who don't already know, if you go to the bottom left, uh, right hand corner of your screen, you'll see three dots at the bottom like that. That is where you click on that and save the chat. OK, you'll bring up the chat. And again, you've got the three dots on the screen. Go to more, click on that and you've got save chat. OK, so that's where we will 
we will catch you from there. I, we will obviously save the chat. So if you really can't save the chat, give me a shout and we'll we'll pass it on to you. Any I, to what? add to what Fraser's is up to, I think his next step is TEDx in Aberdeen. It is. It is. Fraser, do you want to tell us something about that quickly? Well, there's two parts to that. The first bit is, yeah, uh, one of my other goals was I wanted to be a TEDx speaker. And I said, right, I'll just crack on with it. But my daughter is also a TEDx speaker on the same spot at the same event. So it's amazing what you can achieve if you just follow the process and do it. Honestly, no fluff, no spin, no waffle. Just crack on, be on point, on form and on fire. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK. Hannah, would you drop in the, thank you, that's our, our survey, so please everybody make a note of that. You have 24 hours to fill out your speaker champions survey so that you can support our speakers. Tell them what works, what could do with some work, and something that they could improve upon. There's a broken link apparently. And I do apologise, Wendy, I couldn't see your timer. <laughs> that was my <laughs> Okay, okay. So, um, right, the the link has been deleted or suspended. Can um... It had a typo, I fixed it. All right, thank you very Sorry. much, Jenny. So Hang on, pick up... one more time, one more time. Well, good luck. Pick up the one we've got there in the chat. Okay, that should work. The second one. It so reads 19 20... July. 19 July. I have a question for Tracy. Tracy, how can we support Sister Project? Thank you. Tracy? Oh, you're on mute, huh? <laughs> that was my practice run. Thank you. Um, there is on our website, there is a donate button. Um, if you meant to support us financially, if you wanted to support in um, like an in-kind fashion, um, there's plenty of opportunities to do that. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. Um, things to do with marketing or uh, bookkeeping or anything like that would definitely appreciate that support or even by just um, spreading in the West. maybe you have some connections that you think would be um, valuable to for us to be connected to them or them connected to us so um, <clears throat> many ways many ways to to support us thanks thanks Jen awesome thank you Okay, I think we're done. Thank you so much to our four fabulous speakers. It has been a wonderful afternoon slash morning for you, Fraser, of sharing how we belong and how we can move from where we were outside, inside and out again. So thank you all, brilliant speakers. Thank you to Speaker Champions. We look forward to receiving your feedback in the next 24 hours. Just remember. And speakers, feel free to add yours in as well for your, your fellow speakers, because obviously you as speakers have a, a little extra insight as well. Jenny, you were about to say. Yes, I was wondering, are you all keen for us to share the recording of this event live to everyone? Would you like that? Give me two thumbs up. Yeah? Okay, most thumbs are up. All right, cool. <laughs> We've had wonderful. such a blast today, haven't we? Yes, it's been wonderful. It's an, Thank you it's very an amazing much. Amazing session, everyone. Well done yeah. to all our speakers. Thank you. Big congratulations. And we shall see you all next time round. For now, bye from me. Don't forget to save the chat. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye.